My name is Sam Vaknin. I'm the author of Malignant Self-Love, Narcissism Revisited. European banks, from Sweden to Austria, are likely to face in the near future an unprecedented wave of attempts at identity theft. Hackers from Latvia to Ukraine and from Serbia to Bulgaria are now targeting financial institutions. The global crisis has added to the rows of unemployed former spies, laid-off bankers and computer programmers. Networks of secret agents, knowledgeable financiers and computer-savvy criminals have sprung all over Eastern and Central Europe and the Balkans. How can Europe's banks defend themselves? There are a few steps. First, by assigning account or relationship manager to all business accounts and individual accounts above a certain size. This is a practice already in private banking and investment banking, but it has yet to spread to retail banking. A one-on-one -on -one line of communication between client and a specific bank officer places an insurmountable obstacle in front of hackers and criminals. Number two, banks should allow their clients to block their accounts at no charge to the client. Account blockage means that all transfers from the account require the confirmation and approval of one or two specific bank officers who know the client personally. Thus, even if a hacker or criminal were to succeed to effect a transfer of funds, such illicit and damaging activity could be blocked by the bank. Number three, banks should ignore and disallow instructions in the account received by email or fax. Email communication is amenable to spoofing, hijacking, hacking, and other form of impersonation. Even web-based email services such as Gmail are highly insecure, especially over wireless networks. Similarly, instructions by fax should be accepted only after a client provided verbally a one-time code. Verbal communication should be conducted via mobile phones, not fixed or landlines. The mobile phone's SIM card guarantees to some extent the identity of the specific device used and allows for tracing in, uh, the client in case a crime has been committed. On many networks, the communication flow is encrypted. Men in the middle attacks and interception are more difficult with cell phones, with mobile phones. There are safeguards which banks and financial institutions can implement within their online banking operations. All of Europe's major banks offer to their customers financial services and products through the Internet. But there's a problem. Computer security. To withstand the coordinated onslaught of hackers and cyber criminals who are constantly trying to empty the bank accounts of their victims, online banking websites must incorporate many defensive safety features. These render the entire experience cumbersome and complicated and deter the vast majority of clients. Generally speaking, European banks are far safer than American ones as far as online banking and their online presence go. The list below is a short and by no means exhaustive one and is based on a study conducted by, by the University of Michigan. Atul Prakash, a professor in the Department of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science and two doctoral students, Laura Falk and Kevin Borders, compiled a list of minimal measures for online banking safety. One, all the pages of the bank's website must use SSL, Secure Socket Layer, and TLS encryption technologies. In the Internet Explorer web browser, a small yellow padlock icon appears at the bottom or the top of the page when such encryption is available. It prevents hackers from tapping into the exchange of information between the user's computer and the bank's servers and routers. Most browser browsers now offer a wide variety of anti-phishing protections, color-coded addresses and so on. Users should not use their computer keyboard to type in passwords. Many computers are infected with keyloggers, small software applications that monitor the user's typing and pass on the information to networks of criminals. Instead, the bank should provide a virtual keyboard. It's a tiny on-screen graphic that looks like a keyboard and can be tapped with a mouse. Users can then click their mouse and press the various keys of the virtual key keyboard to form the password. Some banks use Java sandboxing and virtualization technologies in order to isolate 
the online banking session from the user's potentially infected browser or computer. The banking website should not redirect the user to other domains or sites which potentially are not as secure. The bank should insist on strong passwords, minimum five characters allowing combinations of numerals and letters, including capitalized letters. Few banks, unfortunately, adhere to this rule. Many of them allow passwords with only four to five numerals. These are easy to guess with number crunches, special softwares. The bank should never send any information pertaining to the account, especially not passwords, via email. Many European banks violate this cardinal rule by sending a staggering amount of information about the account via email, including account numbers, account balances, movements in the account, and ownership of accounts. The bank should insist on two-factor authentication. The user would need a username and password to access the website, but to transact in the account, the user would make use of one-time tokens, codes. Each user should be equipped with printed lists of such codes, or with a special device that generates them, or should receive these one-time codes via mobile phone. They can, the users can also receive the codes via SMS. The codes are used to transfer money, change a password, change a limit of withdrawal, give instructions regarding securities and deposits, etc. Implementing these six relatively simple security measures would reduce online banking fraud and scamming by at least 90%.